What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Morelli Show. Man, this, I was just talking to Gordon two episodes ago. I was talking about fears and I was going into, you know, past history and dad and mom. And I actually listened to that episode. I don't listen to all the episodes, but I checked in to, to listen to it to see if I could learn. And oh my gosh, boy, did I learn. But I was actually really impressed at the message. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. And I hope that you're enjoying this stuff too. I hope you're benefiting from it. I hope you're taking the information and you're using it in your life to live a better quality of life. That's my mission as a human being. It's to help you live a better quality of life. So today, what are we going to talk about? Ooh, I was thinking about it last night and I thought, gosh, I've been getting a lot of questions about investing. Michael, what are you investing in? There's a lot of people asking about the stocks that I'm invested in. There's a lot of people asking about all the different things, businesses that I'm invested in. So I'm going to share all of that, but I'm going to talk to you about the biggest investment. Before I talk to you about some of the other investments that I am currently making, I'm going to talk to you about the biggest investment. What do you guys think that is? What do you think the biggest investment you could ever make is? Because I think that a lot of us are focused on the wrong investment, and it's really, really important to understand where you should invest first, right? Gold, silver, precious metal, I'll talk about in, in a few, Bitcoin, crypto, growth stocks. But, but what's the thing that you need to double down on like right now before anything else? Yourself. Yourself. How are you investing in yourself, in your self-development, right? There's no investment that you can make like the one on yourself that's going to have a bigger impact. It's just not going to happen. So it's first and most important to invest in yourself. What books are you reading? What mentors do you have in your life? What what environments are you putting yourself into so that you can grow as a human being? Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to develop skills. Your mindset's going to be, become sharper. You're going to become less attached to, to your emotional triggers and your past conditioning. And all of these things, right, are going to allow you to become better. Better at what? Better at the game of life. Right? We're all playing this game. Some of us go to work and play this game. Some of us work for ourselves and play this game. But all of us earn a living. right? And so if we're talking about investing in yourself, it's investing in yourself. It's developing skills, a sharper mindset, better routines, habits, so that you can be more productive, more successful. So what? You can live a better quality of life. And I'll tell you something. As you invest in yourself, you're also going to develop a level of confidence a new level of confidence, a confidence that, that, that is indescribable for a lot of people in this moment because they haven't done the work to grow, to get to a place where like, oh my gosh, right? I look back on all of the, the things that I've done, the work that I've done, the, the mentors, the people I've hung around, the, the different certifications that I've gone to, the, the, uh, all of the different events, I look at all of that and I look at who I was at 31 years old, right? Addicted to cocaine, going through divorce, going through bankruptcy, like chaos, right? So caught up in my emotions, in my past conditioning, like so distraught. And I look at today and I say, gosh, if I wouldn't have taken most of my time and money and invested in myself, no matter how good the investments are, it's still not as good as investing in yourself. So what skills are you learning right now? Right? What breakthroughs are you currently having? What questions are you asking in efforts to overcome and find answers so you can continue to break through? Right? Because that's what life is. It's one breakthrough after the next because you've realized that a growth mindset is so much better than a fixed mindset. Right? Fixed mindset says, this is the way it's going to be. This is what I was born with. I have what I have. I'm just going to make the best of it. A growth mindset 
looks at his life, his or her life and says, no, 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 no. we're going to grow. This isn't it. This is what I'm working with right now. But if I put myself in new environments and I hang around people that have what I want and I read really good books and develop new skills, I can actually grow. And we can take a look at that mindset around your health, right? Oh my gosh, my mom had diabetes, my grandma had diabetes, and you know, so I'm just going to have diabetes. That's a fixed mindset. Same thing you can talk about wealth, you can talk about your relationships, you can use that perspective in anything. So invest in yourself first and foremost. If you are not investing in yourself, then everything else I'm going to talk about, the investments, where I'm putting my money, how I'm doubling down, doesn't mean shit. Seriously. Spend the time, spend the money, go to conferences, get around mentors, put yourself in environments where you can grow. Invest in yourself. I need to make that clear, right? Because I'm getting lots of questions about where are you putting your money? What businesses are you investing in? Right? Are you doing gold? Are you doing silver? Are you doing Tesla? Are you doing crypto? Is it Bitcoin? Is it, is it XRP? Is it SafeMoon? Is it Doge? Right? Like, what are you investing in? And so I can talk about all those things, and I will. But you've got to take a step back right here and right now and say, am I investing in myself, in my growth, in my mindset? Am I developing new skills where I can become more successful in health, in wealth, and in my relationships. So now let's talk about investing. You're taking your money and you want to know what to do with it. Now, first and foremost, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I just started investing about a year ago. I'm only going to share what I have done. And the truth is, is I've made some and I've lost some. I will say the, the biggest lesson since I started investing back last March is patience. Patience. And, and you know, I, I, I talk about patience and I did a live inside one of my groups talking about patience. Sidebar here, my grandpa. This is the one thing my grandpa always, always talked about. Michael, you got to have patience. And at the time, right, 15 16, I had no comprehension of what he actually meant. I'm just like, okay, patience. Yeah, you got to be patient, right? In the moment, I didn't think about it. But now looking back, this was the one thing he ingrained in me, patience. You got to have patience. As parents, we know how important patience is, right? In business, entrepreneurs who have gone through, you know, the, the, the catastrophes of bankruptcy and bouncing back and back and forth, like, you know, you have to have patience. If you're building a great physique and great health, again, you know how important patience is. So when my grandpa said patience, and that was like at the forefront of everything, I realize now how important it is because I got my ass kicked a couple of times with investing, pulled my money out too fast right? Not patient enough. And so if I look at investing, right, the first thing that I now ask myself is, is am, I look, am I looking for a short-term win here, a short-term gain, right? Because short-term gains, quick short-term gains come with quick short-term losses, right? So you have to go into this with a mindset that assesses where you're at and what you're looking for, right? So are you looking for a short-term gain because you want to pull cash out and live on it and, you know, pay off a credit card or pay your rent with it, right? That's really, really risky. And I know there's a lot of successful day traders that are doing that, but they have a ton of experience. That's risky. You're looking at more longer-term investing? Well, I think that it's still risky, but I think that that risk is far better to take than leaving your money in cash, right? If we look at what's going on with cash, cash is dead. It's no secret. Cash is dead. They just keep printing it. I mean, pretty soon, right? Like that's confetti. So to hang on to cash right now while they print, I think like $120 billion a month, like if you think about that and you think about the cash supply, you can basically run some math and say, my cash is 
depreciating by 1% to 2% every single month. Every single month. That's like 15 to 20% over the year where just if you keep cash in the bank without earning interest, you're going backwards 15%. That's crazy. Don't hang on to your cash. I've got no cash. I have got the only cash that I have is the cash that I need to live on. And I'll tell you right now, I am living well below my means, well below my means. Moved out of my house, sold my G-Wagon. I am living so far below my means that finally for once, I feel like I'm in control. I feel like I'm in control. And so to just recap here, are you looking for short-term gains? Are you looking for long-term gains? Right? Are you looking to protect your assets? Like all of these things need to be taken into consideration. So I think short term is very challenging. And I would not advise anyone who's just beginning to go in short term looking to make a little money every single day, like buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. I think that is a recipe for disaster. Unless you've got some money saved, you're gonna take a course. I think, you know, there's Ricky Gutierrez, there's a couple of really, really good people who teach day trading. Unless you're gonna really go through that. And you're going to start with, you know, cents, dollars and cents to, to learn it. I would not stick any significant money in trying to effectively day trade. Not, not in these markets. It, it's up, it's down. Yellen gets on TV and she talks about increasing taxes. And the next thing you know, the market drops five points. Like it is just too volatile right now to engage in my opinion. Now, what am I doing in the market? I'm looking at growth stocks. I've got a handful of stocks that I love that are just post SPAC. And I've looked at their numbers. I've looked at their industries. I've looked at their competition. Like one of them is Neo. It's a Chinese car manufacturer, electric. They make electric vehicles. I think that is a stud of a company, right? I think that that is just that that's that right there to me is like, okay, cool. It may go up, it may go down, but I'm looking at, you know, five years. What does that stock look like comparatively to like a Tesla who's, you know, 550, 600, 650 recently. I think those are smart investments. I, I think, you know, uh, FUBU, F-U-B-O, it's a, a streaming company, another, um, um, it's like an HBO, another really, really good company with a lot of growth. Um, I look at DM, which is in 3D printing. I know that that's the future. So for me, if I'm looking at stocks, I'm looking at investing longer term and I'm looking at investing in growth stocks, stocks that are early stage, but have huge upside potential, have great management, have great PR, have a great business model, potentially are a first mover in the space, STEM, S-T-E-M. That's a company that's in AI storage. I love them, right? So this is what I'm looking at and I am putting my money in and I'm that's it, right? Like I'm not putting my money in with the expectation that I'm going to take it out tomorrow or next week or next month. These are longer term plays. Now, I will say this. I <laughs> This is all new to me, right? As I said, I would spend tomorrow's money today. Like up until maybe just like, oh gosh, a couple years ago, a year ago, I would spend tomorrow's money today. It was all about, you know, spending, buying things, the material world. I've shared that story with you guys. So it wasn't up until like last March where, I'm, where I started to get really smart with my money. And I'll tell you, it's the best decision ever. I would much rather have solid investments, great security, than brand new shoes, more clothes, nights out at the bar, bottle service, you know, flamboyant cars like now if you can have both awesome right i haven't got there yet i can't have both i, I can't have uh, three cars and three you know three supercars in my garage plus all of my investments right so i'm gonna take care of and i realized this i i i thought right happiness was was the three cars and the big house and and you know bottle service and and, and girls and watches and clothes and you know limited edition yeezys i thought that that's what happiness was and i was lied to what i realized now, being on the other side of it, is that true happiness, 
as we're talking about the financial pillar, the wealth pillar comes from security. It comes from having passive money take care of those things. It comes from um, having paid off uh, um, uh, credit cards and, and very little debt and, and living well below your means. And for once, like no credit card debt, right? Uh, living so far below my means. And it feels so damn good. In fact, my mindset wants to keep me in that other space and I have to like pull myself out of it because I'm not there anymore. And I've almost got to like remind myself like, Michael, you're not fucking there anymore. You don't have to worry, dude. And so back to investments, what else am I invested in? So a year ago, I made a really good decision. March, last March, 2020, I bought a ton of precious metal. I bought a ton of gold and silver. I think I bought silver at like, 11, 12, $13 an ounce. I bought a couple thousand ounces. And then I bought gold and gold was like 1700, 17 and change. I bought a ton of gold, a ton of silver, precious metal. Now you send it to, you know, out, off to storage in Vegas and they take care of it. Now the good thing or the great thing is that you can borrow against precious metal. So here's my thought process in this. And I've already made, I don't, I don't know how much I've made, but if I bought it at 17, right, it's like 19 and change now. So a couple hundred dollars an ounce there. Um, I've more than doubled my money on the silver. And if we look at like the trajectory of precious metal based on inflation, based on how much you know money the government continues to print, I mean, it's set up pretty nicely. Now, here's the, the amazing thing that, that I want to share. <laughs> I put all of my money or my precious metal in storage and I borrowed against it. And... The fee to borrow against it, I think, is less than what it's going to appreciate year over year. So it's almost like you've got some free money to work with. Now, what do you do with the free money? Well, what I've done with it, now, again, this is not financial advice. I don't think you should do what I'm doing. I'm sharing what I am doing with you because I get questions about it. So what am I doing with that money? Growth stocks, crypto. I've been buying Bitcoin Every time it goes to the low 30s, I'm buying more. I'm buying more. I'm buying more. Now, when I say I'm buying more, I'm not buying hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't, I don't have that kind of capital. But I'm buying more. I'm buying more. In fact, right now, I'm sticking any of my free cash into Bitcoin. A little bit of, I think you call it Ethereum. How do you say that? I always, Ethereum, Ethereum, E-T-H. <laughs> but Bitcoin for me as I'm researching it, as I'm listening to the pioneers, because in my mind, I'm like late. I got friends that were in for pennies, pennies, who have just become millionaires and even in some cases billionaires because of crypto. Now, it's very speculative. It's very volatile. But I think in the end, there's something to be said about Bitcoin. And I'm curious to know, like, as you're following me, drop me a message on one of the social media platforms and, and let me know, like, are you invested in Bitcoin? I know the last I heard, the last stat I heard, as of right now, 10% of Americans have some money in crypto. I can't remember if it's some money in Bitcoin or if it's just crypto as a whole, but the word is getting out. And the reason why I love Bitcoin more than all of them, not just because it was, you know, the first, but if we look at it, there's only 21 million Bitcoin. Like that's all there will ever be. And so if you're looking at the billionaires and you're looking at people who want to like, they want to be the pinnacle of the pinnacle of wealth. Like what's the pinnacle of wealth? Well, gold is great, but you can continue to mine more gold, right? It's not a, necessarily a scarce resource. Cash is fucking dead. We don't have to talk about that anymore. Like they're just going to keep printing that shit and printing that shit till there's no end. That thing, that's becoming worthless. Um, and, and so if we look at like the pinnacle of wealth, Right. For these billionaires and, you know, Elon Musk and Michael Saylor and, and, and these guys like what's like the pinnacle. Now, I don't know if we can answer that question today. Right. But if we look five years out, 10 years out, hedge funds get in, more banks get in. Right. Ray Dalio just bought Bitcoin. Michael Saylor has got two billion in Bitcoin. That guy's worth a bajillion dollars. You got Elon Musk, who put a ton of money into Bitcoin. If I look at it and I say, could this end up being, and I don't know, but could this end up being the pinnacle of wealth? Could it be, right? Only 21 million. Do they become worth a million dollars each? I don't know. 
Do they become worth 500000 each, 100000 each? Or do we realize that this is just some Ponzi scheme and does it crash and become nothing again? Like those are all real questions and questions that I'm wrestling with as I look to number one, make sure I'm diversified, but number two, make sure I'm putting my money or the majority of my money in the places where I think are going to yield the biggest return on my investment. And right now, with all the studying that I'm doing, I am not so sure there's a better investment than Bitcoin. And I say that, and there's a lot of people that are like, man, I knew that a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and that is true. I will reiterate that I believe that I am late, but maybe not too late, right? In another year, in another two years, another five years, that might be too late. And so where we're at right now, I, I just have a really good gut feeling based on the knowledge that I'm gathering, the people that I'm listening to. And for me, that's where I'm putting my money. So to answer the people that have been asking me, I've got a really, really sound, diversified portfolio. I've got gold and silver. I've got growth stocks and I've got crypto. That's where my money is. Then the rest of my money is in businesses, right? I'm putting money into detox organics to, to make sure that it stays healthy and well. I've put my money, some money into Scottsdale Digital Group, which is a local company that's getting ready to launch 16 websites where we're going to bring a lot of these local retailers online so that they can target and get in front of more shoppers. Um, what else? Um, that's about it. And then I continue to double down. Now, as I'm sharing this with you, I'm realizing that I'm not investing in myself enough right now, meaning I probably need to get out and go to a convention. I probably need to get out and look for another mentor. So there's some things as I'm sharing with you guys that I need to come back around to and take my own advice here because I need to start growing exponentially more. And I know in order to do that, I've got to read more. I've got to take more information in and I've got to put myself in environments around people who have what I want. Now, the one thing I realized that is a must for me is not just hanging around people that have a lot of money or have great health or have great relationships, but it's people that have all of those things. And the one thing that is an absolute must, which is happiness, right? If you have a lot of money and you're not happy, what good is the money? If you've got a great body, great health, right? But you're not happy, what good is it? If you've got great relationships, right, we can go on and on. Like you can have whatever you want, but if you don't have it with happiness, then your life is probably miserable and none of it matters anyway. So the first thing is happiness. And I don't want to get too far off of investing because this is a podcast about first and foremost, investing in yourself. And then secondly, taking a look at the different places of where you can put extra cash. Once your credit cards are paid off, you are, are living well below your means, right? You take a look. Do you want short term? Do you want long term? What kind of, of, of return on your investment are you looking for? And then make the best decision for you. So what do you need to do? Do you need to double down on yourself? Do you need to invest in yourself? Do you need to pay off some credit cards? Do you need to live below your means? Or are you ready? Are you doing all that? And are you ready to start taking a look at some of these different asset classes? And are you ready to start slowly? I say slowly, walk slow, only put in money that you can lose. Are you ready to start dabbling in some of the markets? I'll let you answer that question. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I love this podcast. I love talking about these things. Don't forget to leave me a review. I would love, love, love it. I read them all, and I'm excited to hear what you think about this episode. Take care, guys. Have a great rest of your day.